Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode. FMIL upset that we're moving out, less than 10 minutes away. Anxious about in-laws visiting baby after traumatic year. Need to vent, I think my MIL is an unapologetic jerk. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. FMIL upset that we're moving out, less than 10 minutes away. Hi everyone, this is my first time posting here but I just wanted to rant about a situation I'm currently in. I'm getting nothing but mixed signals and mild guilt trips from my FMIL and it's really stressing my partner and I out. So my partner and I have already lived together before, for years, and we're both in our mid-twenties and we have also been together for six plus years. Of those six years, we primarily lived on the east coast, and then my partner moved back to the west coast a year ago due to a job relocation. His mother lives on the west coast as well and in order to save money he decided to move back in with her. Since I was still finishing up school, I had no issue with his decision and we both had an agreement that once I finish up my education, I'll find a job in his area and we will live together. Fast forward to May this year, I graduated but I didn't receive a job opportunity on the west coast, however, I did on the east coast. My partner asked me to decline the job offer and move to the west coast regardless because we wanted to take the next steps together and we wouldn't be able to do that if we were doing long distance. However, due to me not having a job and him wanting to help his mother out, he suggested I should move in with them. I was extremely against this idea from the jump but my partner insisted that I'll find a job in no time and we could move out then. I'm easily persuaded and I was also optimistic that I could find a job quicker if I physically lived there too. So I caved in and moved. It was a huge change for me at first because I lived on the east coast my whole life, my family and all of my friends were there, so the west coast was very new to me. I also moved out of my own home at 19 so I was very used to my own freedom and independence, so moving back in with someone else's mother was a lot. Even though I've known her for years, it just wasn't comfortable. I ended up getting a job that was remote so I started working from home, and she's a stay-at-home mom so she was home all day too. This caused a few issues to come up and near the end of June we had a big fight after I, kindly, asked her to not go through my things. To which she replied, this is my house. This left a very bad taste in my mouth because I had done nothing but compromise my whole lifestyle and livelihood just to be there. I, to this day, cannot keep my own clothes in the room I sleep in because there's no room in the wardrobe, it's half filled with my partner's clothes and half filled with Mill's clothes. So I keep all of my clothes in the guest bedroom. To this day, I cannot shop for my own groceries because FMIL fills up the fridge and leaves no room for anyone else's things. She also refuses to let me cook and thinks she's doing my partner and I a favor by cooking for us daily. Which was sweet at first, but I genuinely would have just preferred to cook my own meals if I had to room to even buy my own groceries. My partner and I also had a cat when we lived together who currently lives with one of my partner's friends because FMIL refuses to have our cat live in the house with us. Anyway, back to the original topic. After the, it's my house, statement, my partner immediately started looking for our own place because he agreed that it was what we decided long ago and living here is taking a huge toll on my mental health. We searched for a few months and since the cost of living is so bad here, we didn't have luck for a solid month and a half. But we finally found a place that we both love and it's in our price range. We signed the lease and told FMIL that we're leaving this Saturday and this week has been nothing but tense. First of all FMIL has been claiming that she's sick, however, has been showing no symptoms of illness. In fact, she just went shopping. Next, she's been claiming that she's not upset, just, disappointed, because apparently she wanted us to live with her for 6 mo, one year so that we could save up for a down payment on a house. 
which is illogical because not only do I have student loans still, the area we currently live in has an average home value of at least 1 million plus. Six months, one year would have never been enough for us to save up for a house here. It's ridiculous. Also if she was so well-intentioned from the jump then why did she constantly make living together a living hell for me? She'd not only invade my privacy non-stop, but every day she also made subtle comments about my weight, my skin, and my job. She never made space for me to feel like this was my home, so why did she expect that I was going to stay? I've also gotten weird overly attached vibes from my partner and his mom since being here because she wakes up early every morning just to make him breakfast and lunch. When I offered to make him breakfast she said, mama's got it. Which made me feel icky. She definitely still sees him as her little boy even though he's a grown man with a full-time job and career. In fact, she still constantly refers to herself as mama when she's talking to my partner as if he's a toddler. Which, in my opinion, is kinda weird. When we mentioned moving out she told me that I better not let him starve because when we lived together on the east coast apparently my partner told her how he wouldn't eat breakfast. Like that's my fault. I would have made him breakfast and all that if I was a stay at home mom just like her, but unlike her I was actually a full time student with a job. And he's a grown man he can make his own breakfast. Even my partner agrees that he can take care of himself but his mother just doesn't see that. She also criticized me for eating out too much and not cooking when, as I mentioned before, have no place to put groceries when I buy them and I'm literally not allowed to cook in her house. I also don't enjoy her cooking as much, so yes, I do go out to eat often. Which I would not do if I had my own apartment, like I did for the past four plus years. She also also acts like we're too young and too stupid to be moving into our own apartment together, when we're literally both in our mid-twenties and we both have lived in our own apartments before. It's only been a year since my so moved back in with his mom after he lived alone for four years, and I have been living alone for close to five years at this point. I know how to take care of myself, and so does he. So Sorry about the extremely long rant. I've just been so frustrated and I feel like I have no one else to talk to this about. I just feel like she should have seen this coming the moment she loudly declared, this is my house. I hate how people never expect their words and actions to have consequences. The relationship my partner and his mother have is also turning me off a little bit, because I expect my partner to be a grown adult and here he is being babied by his mom. Which is why I even told him that if he wants to stay in his mom's house, He's more than welcome to, but I am moving out by September regardless. However, thankfully my partner does agree and thinks moving out is the best case in this scenario. The last part is that we're not even moving far. Our apartment is literally 10 minutes away from his mom's house. Another thing that's also getting to me is the fact that now she's trying to make my partner feel bad by saying she'll have to move out of her three-bedroom house because she won't be able to afford it alone. Which she has already been affording it alone for the past five plus years while putting my partner through college and not working. And my partner said he'd still pay her bills when he moves out anyway. So I just don't understand why she is pulling this. And my partner said he'd still pay her bills when he moves out anyway. I don't quite understand why you are okay with this. In theory M.I.L. is a grown-up and can afford her own living expenses, and did so until D.H. came home. If she can't, she needs to downsize and be able to survive on her own. Seems she doesn't just want his money, she wants him. Why is he going to pay her bills? Huge red flag. Yeah that line freaked me out. OP should at the very least keep finances separate. If he wants to give his paycheck to mommy dearest he can go do that, but OP shouldn't have to waste her own paycheck on MIL. This is all about control, the ability to baby her son and show you who is the top person in his life, her. Her statement, this is my house, says it all.
And no, she didn't think about what she was saying having consequences because she knew she could influence her son and by extension, you, to stay as long as she wanted. It's great you're getting out but why does DH think he has to pay her bills when you won't be living there? That really has to be discussed because you will never be able to afford a house if you are paying for her. Do not give her a copy of your keys. She will let herself in. Also, separate your finances from your partners, that way if he gives her money it won't be from what you've made and he can see how much he's given her. If she asks for money give her a job application. Hopefully he has a shiny spine. And my partner said he'd still pay her bills when he moves out anyway. The FMIL is not your only problem here. Exactly what I was thinking. He most likely can't afford to pay his own rent and Mills bills so OP will have to cover for him. They'll never be able to save up for house or kids if most of his money goes towards his mummy. You've got a big just no so on your hands. How do you expect to afford a home or children if he's paying mama's bills? Please insist on counseling as well as getting out. Get cameras and insist on her not having a key. If I were you I'd get cameras your so doesn't know about to make sure he doesn't give her a key on the sly. Happy cake day. You can work remotely from the east coast, too. Dude is so nonchalantly watching you sacrifice and be treated horribly by his mom. I jump ship. F him. Oh sweetie. You were supposed to move out, he just wasn't supposed to go with you. This rant screams, move back to the east coast, to me. San's boyfriend. <laughs> Anxious about in-laws visiting baby after traumatic year. Disclaimer, I plan to talk to my therapist about this at my next appointment in two weeks. I am 36 weeks pregnant, first time mom, and lately my feelings have really been catching up to me regarding all the things. One thing I'm super anxious about is having my MIL and FIL visit once the baby is born. DH and I have had a traumatic year plus with his parents. Ever since the start of the pandemic, MIL slash FIL have really shown themselves to us. Here is a rough timeline of events that led to DH and I seeking individual therapy slash coaching, long phone conversations with MIL slash FIL, and ultimately implementing some hard boundaries, I am Korean American and DH is white for context. FIL has consistently said racist things on Facebook and called COVID-19 the chintz virus, kung flu, etc. It took way too much effort for him to listen to why this is harmful language. I started to embrace my Korean name and MIL assumed I was disowning my married name. MIL accused me of making DH feeling ashamed for the color of his skin. MIL unloaded on me about how since her name is, Karen, she has been experiencing a lot of racism and it would be nice if I could research it to support her. I invited MIL slash FIL to a webinar titled Asian Child, White Parent and told her DH would also be attending. She said I also need to attend the training to get a better perspective. DH tried to talk to his mom about some of the hurtful things his family has said slash the ways in which they have been dismissive and invalidating. MIL immediately started screaming and demanding to know all the ways in which I've been discriminated, harassed, etc., basically she wanted proof. MIL has told me about the Korean quesadilla she had for dinner and how she wanted to give me her blessings for AAPI Heritage Month. I told her I needed some time and space and that I would not be continuing to share my life experiences with her, teach her, or talk about race-related topics with her. MIL sent me a long apology email that said, I'm sorry you felt attacked when I accused you of making DH feel ashamed, and, it's time to move forward. I replied and told Mayel that she has disrespected my boundaries, I once again asked for time and space and for her to not contact me until I was ready. Mayel accused me of emotionally abusing her. Mayel texted me and said, you must feel so scared being pregnant. I'm always here if you need me. D 
DH and I continue to maintain our boundaries. DH calls his parents maybe once a month to catch up, it's mostly surface level topics. DH does a great job advocating for me, protecting me, and putting me first. He understands that he can have a relationship with his parents that is separate from my relationship with them. I have never felt pressured to put more effort into those relationships. Obviously, DH wants his parents to have some kind of relationship with our son. I'm having a hard time envisioning what that looks like. We told Myel slash FIL that they can visit after the birth when we say we are ready for visitors, we did not put a timeline on it. They even suggested they stay in a hotel while they visit, so there are signs of progress and respect to boundaries, but I don't trust them and I still feel hurt by all the trauma. This is where I feel lost. They have absolutely disrespected me as a Korean American woman and as a human being. How do I get to a feeling of acceptance and feel comfortable welcoming them into my home? The thought of watching them hold my half Korean son breaks my heart. If these people were not DH's parents, they would absolutely be cut out of my life for doing half or even one of the things I listed above in the bullets. I love my partner and I know his parents love him. I want him to have a relationship with his parents and I want him to be able to share in that with our son. Should I remove myself from the situation while they visit? Is there another perspective I'm not aware of yet? Thanks for reading this far. Don't let them in your home, that's your safe space. Maybe when son is a few months old they come to town for weekend visit and you meet at a neutral place. Day at zoo or walk in park. You gave code word to end meeting if they be own too much. Hugs. If she has to see them or can't bring herself to implement the spine she needs for this, then they should get nothing more than an olive garden, two hours tops, relationship, maybe once or twice a year. Being a grandparent is a privilege not a right. Especially when you're so openly hostile towards the mother for being of a different race slash heritage. They sound incredibly racist. Push for meeting them in a neutral space. It sounds like they don't plan to be racist towards your future children, why do they get to be racist towards you? Obviously, DH wants his parents to have some kind of relationship with our son. I'm having a hard time envisioning what that looks like. Don't feel obligated to answer these, have you asked DH what he thinks that would look like? Is it likely he has an ideal relationship in mind based on the premise the baby is going to enlighten them in some way? And if that enlightenment doesn't occur, is he willing to maintain boundaries slash consequences? DH needs to understand that they are being racist against you and what they are saying will also be racist against his child. His child is part you and if they are saying these things about you they are in return saying then about his son. Your son doesn't need to be around them. He doesn't need that negativity. How long before they make a comment about your son? Or he heard them being racists and him realizing that they are saying this this about him. At some point he will hear it and realize it is about him as well. You can't say something racists and they say it isn't about you though. But people think they can do that. Please just protect your son and get your husband to understand what they have said and are saying if also against your son. Sorry if I'm aiming he didn't understand, but I just feel that if he did understand he wouldn't want his child around his parents. He may be able to get them to stop saying things, but they won't stop being racists. They will just say it to other people. Protect your baby's dignity. That's the only advice I have. It is demeaning to not only be in the presence of racism but to watch it directed towards your mother and yourself is another level. I wouldn't move forward with this relationship unless a professional mediator sits down to explain to them how damaging their behavior is and what the consequences will be if they don't put in the work to put an end to their disgusting behavior. Shameful racists. Exactly. They don't get to be around your babies and pretend you don't exist like you're some inconvenience to be ashamed of. Oh OP I can't even imagine how you are feeling right now. 
they both sound incredibly toxic and racist. Have you thought about going NC slash VLC how does your husband feel about this? The way I judge relationships is this do they bring more good than bad into my life? Are they harmful to my mental health? Is my life better without them in it? I know we don't get the full picture from one post but it sounds like they are not healthy people for you or your baby to be around and it is okay to cut toxic people out of your life. I'm just so sorry it's an awful situation to be in. Oh honey. I can only imagine how difficult this behavior has been for you. My situation isn't ex exactly the same as yours, other than my in-laws have just disrespected who I am as a human being. I felt guilt for a long time. I also wondered how in the world I could get to a feeling of acceptance or be willing to welcome them to my home. And you know what? Eventually, I asked myself why that was my problem. D.H., while acknowledging that their atrocious behavior had to change, also asked me repeatedly what they were going to have to do to re-earn my trust. Truly, I didn't have a clue, because they spent the first ten years of their relationship with me treating me like I was a lesser human being. How do you come back from that? Eventually, I told him that I didn't dig their hole for them, and so I didn't appreciate having to be the person to roadmap their way out. That was their responsibility, and their work to do. If we had to do that for them, what was the likelihood that their behavior would truly be changed? In my opinion, they caused the damage and it was their job to fix it. I promised to my husband that I would be honest about the issues that their behavior caused and give them a chance to earn back the trust, but also told him that I wouldn't be doing any of the work for them. It's not your job to figure out how to get to a place of acceptance. There's a massive chasm between you that they created. They need to figure out how to close it. You can't make them do the hard work. All you can do is be willing to forgive and move on once they've reached your minimum standard of respectful. As for your son, he doesn't need a relationship with racist grandparents without massive changes to their hearts, minds, and behavior. Your anxiety about that is coming from good maternal instincts. You said that you and DH are in individual therapy over their behavior, but I think that couples therapy would also be helpful in this situation since this is a major decision that will impact your son and marriage. Did they take the class you recommended? If not, it would be a hard no from me until they did so. It's the very least they could do. So sorry you're going through this. And congrats on your LO. I am the white woman in our interracial relationship, my husband is Filipino, and my parents are similar to your husband's. Whenever something racist happens to my husband, my mom gives responses like, everyone is racist, not just white people, frustrating sh asterisk t like that. My dad thinks white Christian men are the most persecuted race right now. Okay, dad. You really need to talk to your DH about your concerns of your biracial kids around his parents. Lay out scenarios and how you will both respond to those situations. I.e. leave immediately if something racist or offensive is said and put them on a timeout. Have a game plan and have consequences thought out with DH. You and your children are a package deal. Don't send your children to them and stay home. Your children are not support animals. Explain to DH that it's not okay for just him and the kids to visit his parents and for you to stay behind. Need to vent, I think my MIL is an unapologetic jerk. I, 25F, just delivered my first child with my dear husband, 24M. I already don't have the best relationship with my mother-in-law that's a story for another day but keep this in mind. I did not post anything about my pregnancy on social media and I wanted my husband and I to announce our news. After giving birth, I was in a good mood and wanted to share pictures. I texted a group chat I made with my MIL and her siblings and mother. I said we are not sharing on social media at this time but I just wanted to share these pictures of my daughter with family. 
Why in a matter of minutes while I'm still in the recovery room with a second degree tear and still can't walk from the epidural do I hear my husband on the phone saying, delete it, just delete it. I get on Facebook and I see my MIL posted the pictures with my child's full name. She deletes it but blocks me on social media, she didn't even call to check on me or congratulate me. She then tells her SIL that she feels like she's being exiled from the family and a whole sob story. Maybe, I'm tripping but I felt like not only did she disregard my feelings but then she turns to her SIL and make it seem like I was a villain. I told my husband I was going to text his mom and tell her how I felt and he practically begged me no but I insisted because she always gets to disregard me but it's sweep under the rug because she's his mom and that's just how she is. I didn't even curse her out, like she deserves, but I told her in a short version that if I'm going to have any relationship with her I need an apology. This is my moment with MY family and she will not disrespect me again. She responds disregards everything I said near and said she never received my text, telling her not to post, and it was a misunderstanding. If that was the case, why did she block me and go cry wolf? She never answers that, when she literally could said that when she spoke to my husband OTP. We continue to go back and forth in texts and it ends with her telling my husband I need to get a grip on my emotions and she won't be bullied into apologizing. My husband told his mom, if she disrespects me she disrespects him and is no longer on speaking terms with her. Now my FIL, who she's not in a relationship with, feels like my husband should reach out to his mom for the sake of my daughter. Mind you his mother hasn't reached out since we left the hospital and my daughter is almost six weeks now. Am I wrong for feeling like this? Also, my husband is her only child. Not okay in the slightest. It is for the sake of your daughter that you put your foot down in this scenario, otherwise MIL will do and say to your daughter whatever she wants and might disregard your parenting decisions and authority. Your daughter doesn't need MIL, she needs you and your husband happy and healthy. Congrats on the baby and all the best XX. You, you and your husband should keep her in time out, no contact, no baby pics and wait her out. You guys have all the power here. As long as you stand together, she will have to see reason or no grandbaby. Now, it'll take her a while to figure this out, especially as she's really gonna hate this new reality, so expect some boundary stomping as she tries to regain her lost supremacy, but as long as you stick together you are golden. So, watch out for her, and other relatives, attempting to split you and start triangulating. Don't let anyone divide and conquer. I'm so sorry. I wasn't thinking about it being your moment and that was selfish of me. I panicked when I blocked you not thinking things through. I'm ashamed of my actions that put a shadow over what should a cherished time for all. What is so hard about saying the above? They can never do it. It's really sad. You deserved better. I hope your so stays on your side. What his dad is doing is manipulative. If she would say that right now, I would put this behind us, not saying we would be close, but I doubt it. She's really stubborn. If she can't deal with one simple rule about your child, and not apologize after, without even being in your child's physical presence, can you trust her with something like, no kissing the baby, or, no pillows in the crib? I'm so proud of you and your husband for setting his mother straight. So many stories in this sub go from bad to worse, meaning, either the husband sides with the mother, and the wife just takes it, and complain, I'm so proud. Please continue to do this when she gets above her position. Congrats. I'd like to say I agree with most of the comments here. In respect to Phil saying do it for your daughter, you did do something for your daughter. Your mill didn't do anything for your daughter. So why should you both go brown nosing slash rug sweeping to mill for your daughter? If she, mill, wants to something for your daughter, she needs to do as DH said, apologize and also reach out.
Good riddance to bad rubbish, your MIL. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.